Hallelujah. I want to share with you uh, a letter that I received in the mail this past week. I received this package. I had, uh, I've shared from time to time about pastors that have come and visited us during this, this season, COVID. I bless you guys back there. Guzman family, glory to God. <laughs> Look at <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, you know, with, with COVID and the issue that's taking place, a lot of churches didn't know what to do. I mean, we, we struggled with so many things and how to stay safe and all that. And, and so we've had some, uh, we've had pastors that would sneak in and they would sit there and they'd come to me, Pastor, don't tell anybody I'm here. It's okay, I won't. But I will after you're gone. <laughs> and one of them sent me his book. And I've gone through it. I'm reading the whole thing, but I've already gone through it. Very good. It's called The Divine Chase, Pursuing, Responding to a Pursuing God. It's a powerful word. And he wrote me this letter, and I wanted to share it because it's really for the congregation. It says, hey, Pastor Clark. Hey, I like that when they, <laughs> that's how I talk to people. Hey, <laughs> hey, Pastor Clark, my wife, Linda, and I thoroughly enjoyed being blessed by your worship by worshiping with you and Santa Church for the last few weeks as our home church has been preparing for reopening. We appreciate so much a welcoming congregation and the courage you have shown in these trying times. We look forward to dropping in from time to time to worship again with you all. Your preaching is deeply edified and edifying and timely for us personally. I've enclosed a copy of my book as promised. Divine Chase. I hope you have a little time to look at it. It would be such a blessing to me and hopefully to you. We will be keeping your great fellowship of Center Church in our prayers. Lord, richly bless you, brother, and the church. Brother Ben Bounds. How awesome is that? You know, you never know who you're going to reach out to. This commitment that we've made to be able to see what it takes to be able to have this church open and we can reach people, even pastors, reaching pastors. It's just one of many and some that continue to come. So it brought tears to my eyes when I saw and I opened it up, began to go through the word. And I said, you know, if a pastor can come and enjoy the word that's being preached here, how much more the people of God from our community can come. So. I'm calling everyone forth, amen, to come. And so tell others, use your social media to tell others that there is a church, there's a house of worship that they can most certainly come to and receive the word of God safely and with love and grace. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Turn with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 63. I want to talk to you about loving kindness, loving kindness kindness i bless you all up there god bless you i gotta look into the balconies <laughs> it's gonna be so good psalm 63 verse 1 says oh god you are my god early will i seek you my soul thirsts for you my flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water so I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands to your name. Father, I pray that you bless this word in Jesus' name. The word loving kindness in Greek is chest, C-H-E-S-E-D. In this latter sense is of charity is considered a virtue on its own and also for its contr contribution to another word is tikam aliam, which means repairing the world. Listen to this. Loving kindness, to operate in loving kindness, prepares or repairs the world. There's something that all of us can do, a behavior that we can enter into that is designed to change the world. We hear presidents, we hear senators, we hear congressmen 
say they want to change the world. But God in his word has given us a character, an attribute, that if we act accordingly, it is a world changer. One word, loving kindness, can change the world. It's used to exemplify the love of God towards his children. It's a big love. It's not just kindness. It's not just love. It's not just kind. It's an action that, ex that expresses the love of God to his. To who you are. To his children. Loving kindness. The word kind is to have similar characteristics. To be kind to a person, to be kind to a person is to, is to act in right manner. I lift my hand up to shake your hand, you're kind, you lift up your hand to shake mine. I smile at you, you smile back. That's kind, that's to be kind. It's of the same characteristics. Loving is a feeling or showing of love of great care. People can be loving. They, they hug you. They care for you. They do things for you. It's, it's a wonderful, powerful word. Kindness is the quality of being friendly or generous and considerate to someone. Kindness is, is an easy earthly reaction to a person. Love is an easy earthly reaction to a person. To be kind is, you can be kind to anybody. You can be kind to strangers. You can be kind to anybody. Love, you have to have some type of camaraderie. Kindness is a personality that a person has. But loving kindness is considerate to the needs of his creation. To operate in loving kindness is that you are doing something because you want to serve God through his creation, which are those of us that live here. When we walk on this planet, we come in contact with many people around the world. You come in contact with clients, you come in contact with individuals in your home, you come in contact with your neighbors, even your family members, and, and one of these areas or attributes you operate in. You can be kind, you can be loving, you can have kindness, but I want Center Church and all of Center Church people to run around this planet and here in the Rio Grande Valley to operate in loving kindness. We're not just kind. We're not just loving. We're not just operating kindness. We have to operate in loving kindness and chast. That we will produce Tikram Alam on this planet. That we will produce love to those that belong to God. I want you to think about this. The Bible says many are called but few are chosen. So we don't know who they are. I choose to believe anyone who comes in front of me, God has chosen them and they belong to him and I shall have loving kindness for that person. Oh my God. No, it's easy to love people that love you. It's easy to be kind to people that are kind to you. Operating kindness, eh, it's a little bit harder sometimes. But loving kindness is an attribute that is beyond anything this earth can ever teach you. This loving kindness does not respond or react to personalities that come against you. People can be friendly and kind to you, and you can be friendly and kind to them. That's easy. But those that have ill intent, jealousy, envy, bitterness, strife, those are hard people to love. Those are hard people to be kind to. But loving kindness will break that. Whatever it is that they will break. They don't mean to be mean. This is the way I see it. People don't mean to be mean. They're hurt because someone hurt them. And they carry their hurt with them. And it now is showing up in front of you. And I'm going to tell you why. If you operate in loving kindness, the reason why it shows up in front of you is because God has destined you to heal them, to change them, to be a world changer in their life. Recognize this passion. Loving kindness is not difficult. It is the easiest thing to do. But you have to be cautious. 
of doing it. You have to find those that have a need and begin to operate and how to break that thing. In Psalms chapter 63 on, on that verse, because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. That's a powerful statement in this passage. It is saying loving kindness is better than living. Let that reside in your spirit just for a moment. Loving kindness is better than life. Think about what the writer here is saying. Oh, he's in a thirsty land. He's in a place where he's destitute. He's in the midst of war. Yet he himself recognizes, God, your loving kindness is better than my, my living. The writer here knows his destination is to be the king and a priest to multiple people, to whole generations, and that God had ordained him to do so. He knew what his future was, had not entered into it just yet. He's in destitute being chased by a mentor, yet in the moment of his greatest persecution, he says, I'm going to run into your sanctuary. I'm going to go in before you, Lord, because your loving kindness is better than anything that I can do in my entire life. People of God, we have to live this way. This is not an act, but it is a behavior. And we have to learn how to do this. And we're going to bring this to the Rio Grande Valley. And we're going to change the world of the Rio Grande Valley. Are you hearing me? Loving kindness. We're not just going to be kind and we're not just going to act happy. And we're not just going to be friendly. We're going to operate in love being kindness. Is that people that come in front of us are ordained by God for us to change them. In Psalms chapter 8, watch what it says right here. What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. This is where the Lord wants every human to be. There's not a single person that God did not ordain to be in this place. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. Every one of us are to have dominion over. He's created us lesser than angels, yet have told angels, take care of them. They have more power and more authority than you who are able to operate in the celestial and in the physical. We're trapped in the physical. Now many of us, some may be able to see the supernatural. Others may be able to feel the supernatural. But the angelic creatures are able to go back and forth between the natural and the supernatural. The possibility that Adam and Eve were able to do the same until the fall is there. And the goal is to get us into that position, that, that their failed state, the word had to say, we have to let this mortality take on immortality. That our goal is that we are no longer to stay in the state that we are in. And he raised up a savior named Jesus Christ. And if we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we shall be saved. Now I have an authority and a responsibility to operate in this loving kindness to carry this word so that way I can help my brethren enter into this state. That they have authority over the works of the hand of God. Oh my God, what, what, when I read that scripture, I'm so amazed. I'm so amazed. God, you created and then you said here, it's yours. God, you, you put it in motion and then you said, here, you have the authority. I have the authority to call heaven and earth down, rebuke devils, call in wealth and prosperity, speak life to my body, to my children, healing to my flesh, protect. I have that authority. Why? Because he has given me. He made me to have authority. Wow. Wow. Watch this in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. 
You are God's building. Let that reside in you just for a moment. You're God's fellow worker. God and you are employed together. He is a peer. You are a peer. God, can you, can we even just pause? Just pause for a moment. Just think about how big that, that sounds. We work with God. Sometimes we want God, God, will you do this for me? Lord, will you do this for me? Now he says, if you ask, he'll do it for you. Why? Because he's trying to make your job easier because you're working together with him. Someone who's laboring together with me, I want to be able to give you whatever tools that you need to get your job done. Whatever your job may be. I tell those that are in the ministry here, what is it that you need? The leadership that's inside the, inside the church. I said, please advise me. What is it that I can do to make your job easier? What is it that the church can do to help empower you? Because we're working together. Let us work together. Watch this. The action of loving kindness. Listen to this. The action of loving kindness is love of thine espousal to Yahweh and Yahweh it's love towards his creation or chosen. Well, here's what this means. There's a camaraderie when we work together with him. This scripture here, there's another passage that says you are God's husbandry. This is a powerful word that I want us to understand. In the King James, it says you're God's husbandry. Where it says fellow worker, he says you're God's husbandry. It is a closer relationship than yoking yourself together with your spouse. The relationship that you have working and laboring. The Bible says it's not man for, for man to, it's not good for man to be alone. So he went ahead and put a deep sleep on Adam and he pulled a rib out of Adam and he fashioned and crafted Eve. So that way there would be a collaborator, a co-laborer with Adam and Adam would not be by himself. This is closer than that. It is a, is Gregorian, a, a, the, the word fellow workers or, or field, field Gregorian is, it's a tilled field cultivator or husbandry. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a field that you are, you are in likeness. That you're together. That when you're yoked together with God, watch this. And now bear with me on this statement. When you're yoked together with somebody, you become that person. When I see husband and wives together, when you see them apart, there's still that element, that residual relationship that's together. When I, when I see you a, uh, when I see you at the store and your spouse may not be there, there's a personality, there's an action, there's a, there's a vernacular, there's a, maybe a hand motion or the way you act. There's a similarity that you so much, the, the more time you spend together with this unity, you become like each other. And that's what God has designed us to be. Not separated. Wanted us to be together. So if I'm, if my wife is with me, we act and talk, we've got 33 years together. And so there's a lot of personalities that I've corrupted her with. <laughs> but she's given me permission when she said I do. <laughs> she's affected me beyond. And we've taken on each other's personalities. Has made us into this one creature. It can only happen through covenant. So God says, You're my husbandry. Come on now. Now I'm married, I'm co laborer, I'm collaborator with God. And if, if my spouse and I become one, and we begin to act like one, how much more when we are attached to God do we become like God? Come on now. How much more will you be blessed? How much more joy will you have? How much more happiness will you have? Because you're attached to such a great creator, the creator of the universe. I, I have this statement that I, that I tell people and you know, in, in uh, in business consulting, I, I tell people this thing. I say, look, I'm not interested in becoming a billionaire. That was the time I was, but I'm not interested in becoming a billionaire. And the next best thing of being a billionaire is to be friends of a billionaire. <laughs> so now I'm just looking, who can I help create into a billionaire? I just want to be your friend, right? And that be right? And look who my laborer, my collaborator is. It's my God. 
Kids, you're in school and you're studying. You have God with you to work with you. Teachers, God's with you, walking with you, working with you. Whatever it is, or office worker or president of a corporation, God is with you, working with you. How many times do you ask your collaborator, how do I do? Ask yourself that question. The Bible says we have not because we ask not or we ask amiss. If you're collaborating together and he's collaborating together with you, you have the ability to work together with him. So that, that, that word of field, the husbandry, the cultivation, the field, you are all one and the same. We have to understand that we need, we need to understand that this is an identifier, a qualifier, working together with him. When we walk in loving kindness, this is an identifier that you are his and he is yours. So much so that a person who acts mean, their salvation is at question. Have you all ever heard people say, and they call themselves a Christian? Huh? Don't you hate that? There was a preacher that was on television just recently that he and his wife were caught in this this uh, misgiving of a communication or, or, or of a relationship, and it's so bad. And and I being in the ministry and and also. In business, you don't know how many times I heard, oh my gosh, those evangelicals. As if we have a manual on how to behave like that. <laughs> and I look at them and I say, well, you're not saved? And I say, man, why do I want to be a Christian? Behave like that. Okay, so you're a murderer. So I told one guy, I said, you're a murderer. I said, what? I'm not a murderer. Yeah, because I know murderers that are not saved. And by your definition... Saying evangelicals all behave like this is also say all those who are not are murderers. You murderer. <laughs> he didn't like that too much. But he opened up to hear what I had to say. I caught his attention. And then I was able to tell him about the loving kindness of God without even using the word of loving kindness. I said, they're breached. They're broken. And the Bible says they could be forgiven. Isn't that beautiful? God is so gracious. It identifies us. Loving kindness identifies who we are. When you're not kind, you have an insecurity. That's what happens. People that are not kind, they tend to pull down their brother. They don't lift up their brother. Person who doesn't operate in loving kindness, they're always trying to, that person's always trying to get you to their level. Oh, you're not as good as you think you are. You need to be just as bad as me. That's ultimately what's happening there. Loving kindness is designed to lift up people to God. It's not designed just to lift people up. They get, they get richer and they get better and they get a bigger house. And, no, it's about lifting them up to God. It's a reconciliation. Watch this. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, watch what he says, 18 and 19. Jesus came and spoke to the disciples. He came to them and said... All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. How powerful is that? Go therefore now and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He saying, this is the way you show loving kindness. All authority has been given to me. You're working together with me. Now you go and go make disciples. Make disciples means create a student. And if you've got hatred, anger, bitterness, jealousy, strife, do you think God's going to send you people? Do you think the Lord's going to attach you to some, send some chosen child to you? Huh? Why? So you can spread and propagate that hatred, that anger, that jealousy, that envy? No. But when you start operating in loving kindness, the Bible says, Jesus says, if I be lifted up, I will draw men unto me. That's our response. Loving kindness lifts up Jesus and who he is. When we operate in loving kindness, he starts gathering the crowds to you. People begin to, are, begin to be attracted to you. They'll come running trying to figure out where you are. And get this, people will even help you do what you're doing better. They'll begin to empower you in what it is that you're believing for. They begin to take care of you without you even realizing they're helping to take care of you. But they're not doing it because of you. They're doing it because of the loving kindness, the, the representation of Jesus Christ inside you. It's not you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, watch this. Now then, 
We are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us. Being an ambassador for Christ, God speaks through us. But doesn't God just doesn't speak. It does. Everybody thinks that, well, you know, the Lord is inside me. So let me teach and 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 teach. How about showing? Showing, showing, showing. Example. Be that example. Show them who Christ is. <laughs> I came to church one evening and, and as I got to the church, you know, I saw some trash. You know, we have the hotel over here. In Jesus' name, the Lord's going to put them all in our hands one day in Jesus' name. There's people that stay over there and they throw their garbage on the ground and the wind blows it on our property. And so I'm forever picking up garbage outside and that's okay. I don't mind. Doesn't bother me. I'll pick up whatever. So I start picking the stuff up and I go and I throw it away. And after church, I go outside and I see some members of the church picking up trash. I don't know what they're doing. So I go up there and I'm thinking, are they okay? So I drive up to them. I see you okay? I say, no, Pastor, I saw you picking up trash at the uh, before service had started. I had come in early and, and I said, oh, there's more trash over here. And they started picking up the trash. I didn't tell them to pick up trash. I didn't say this is a good thing for them to go do it. I gave no big message about how important it is to take care of the house of God. But that's most certainly what they heard by seeing. Are you hearing me? You know the adage, picture paints a thousand words. Imagine how many words a sight can paint. Oh man, God is so good. Are you guys getting anything out of this? I'm going to conclude with something. Our job in the kingdom is to not pass judgment, but to love humanity to Christ. That's our job on this earth. It's not to pass judgment on people. Look, there's, there's people with a lot of problems and issues. Oh, you don't know. Look, 33 years of, of ministry. My, my, well, maybe there's some people that know what I'm about to say. That been in the ministry as long as I've been in the ministry. You know, there's things that you've seen. I'm going to give you one. <laughs> I'm preaching at a church. They had a balcony. Much smaller, much smaller facility than this. So the balcony was very close. Matter of fact, the back of the balcony is probably as close as where the Kellers are today. That's how small. 3,000 square foot, and they had the audacity to put a balcony in it, you know. I mean, it was a, this was a preacher that said, I'm packing them in like sardines. And I get up there to start preaching, and as I'm preaching, I look up and I see this man and this woman making out. Oh, were they making out. Oh, they were getting into it. I'm talking, oh my gosh, I'm embarrassed. And I'm trying to figure out how to get the usher's attention. Like, somebody got to go up there. You know, I mean, then they, they look how close they are to me and the lights are on. But I'm on television. I said, I can't just interrupt you. Hey, you. I put the camera on them. Service was over and I go up to the pastor and I said, Pastor, I got to tell you something. I saw and I told him what it was. And he says, oh, was, was he wearing this? She wearing this? I said, yeah. I said, this is bad. He says, you think that's bad? His wife was in the audience down on the bottom floor. I said, what? Oh, Yeah. I said, oh my God, <laughs> I've never heard of anything like that. I said, what do you do? He said, I don't know, I'm asking the Lord how to handle this. I said, you know, I was a young preacher at the time. I said, I'll start overturning tables. I said, give me a bucket of rocks and I'll be preaching. They do it again. I'll make sure I got a pretty good shot. It wasn't a bad picture in high school, you know. <laughs> but I watched that man love those people, repaired that marriage. Restore them through love. It changed me. I've never seen love to that level. That time of my life, I had never seen that. Because anybody else would not do that. This was a unique love. And we've seen love where people do kind things to people that deserve kind things. But God is different. He sends His only begotten Son to die on the cross... For the worst of the worst and the best of the best. And says all you have to do is accept the price paid on the cross of Calvary. How powerful is that? The act of loving kindness produces those who are separated from Christ to come running to Christ. This is who we're called to be. We're called to operate in loving kindness. I want to ask you this question. Have you? Will you? 
Have you? Will you? What does it take to operate in loving kindness? Here's how I've summed it up that's helped me. I want to do above more than I can ever think I can do for somebody. Without return. Without my rewards in heaven. I don't, I don't want it here. I'll get it here. You can't walk with a God, a creator, without being blessed. So I'll, I receive rewards here. But that be, I don't do it because I want it here. I want it in heaven. But I walk with God and I, and I get it here. So my challenge to you today is that when you leave this place today and forever, that every person that comes in contact with you recognize that God is using you to show loving kindness to that person. No matter how they behave and no matter how they act or what they do to you, Big smile, head held high with the security of who your co-laborer is. The God and the creator of the universe has given you all authority. Amen? Are y'all going to do this with me? Let's pray.